Well, there, everybody, uh, Data Pioneer here uh, today, and uh, thank you for joining me. And um, um, welcome back after the holidays. I hope you guys had a great Christmas holiday period and uh, happy new year for the year 2020. Can't believe it's 2020 already. I'm bringing you a video today, um, which uh, this is the first system setup and product review I've done in a while. Uh, I'm not going to go through the entire um, setup uh, as far as uh, installing this at particular distro because I've already installed it and uh, we all know how to install distros these days so I'm not going to go through that. I am going to show you though I'm in the uh, uh, in my Oracle virtual machine virtual box manager 6.0 right now and um, I do have the operating system distro of Linux that I want to feature today or showcase today. It is Farron OS December 2019 build and a friend of mine on uh, the Backyard Tech uh, group on, on uh, Facebook turned me on to Farron. I mean, I've been a Farron user before, but I hadn't seen the December 2019 um, build of Farron. Glad that he showed it to me. Um, it is a wonderful distro. Uh, it's definitely a keeper. I've got it installed here as a virtual machine, uh, but I also have it installed on bare metal on my laptop, and I'm loving it. Uh, so it's a keeper for me. Uh, it does use the KDE uh, desktop environment or K desktop environment, which I really like. And uh, and you don't even need to install Compiz in this uh, distro because it's already set up uh, within that uh, distro uh, natively. Let's get into it here. Um, I'm in my virtual machine, VirtualBox 6.0 manager, and I've got Farron OS 64-bit that I downloaded from uh, the Farron website. Um, so I did download the 64-bit version of the 2019, December 2019 build. Here it is set up in here. I'm on uh, general right now. If I go to system, got the hard drive ticked as uh, and moved up the floppy unticked here. And uh, so this will boot up to the hard drive each time instead of the optical media. Uh, I've got 4096 megabytes of, uh, of RAM set up in here. Um, on the display, I've got the full 128 megabytes of video memory uh, for storage. I've got the Farron OS 64-bit uh, ISO that I downloaded, as I mentioned, from the web. For audio, I've just kept the defaults here. For network, I did move away from the uh, from the uh, NAT to the bridged adapter, which I always do. That way, when it comes up, it gets an IP address from DHCP, and it's on my network, and I can touch it if I want to. Uh, for USB, I'm using USB 3.0, and so let me go ahead and click OK here. So we're ready to launch this, and now uh, let's go ahead and click the Start button and uh, get this thing going. Now, I have been in here before, as I mentioned, and I have set up some things and um, tweaked it a little bit, so I'll show you what I've done. This is not totally out of the box, but it's not too far afield from what you get out of the box. Now, I'll mention any differences here as we go along. Takes a few seconds to come up, and I will will caution you or warn you that uh, if you're running a virtual machine, be it uh, VirtualBox or uh, VMware, uh, even the uh, developers uh, of Farron say that it's not going to operate in the virtual machine the same way it would on bare metal. Um, it can be a little sluggish. It can crash from time to time. I haven't noticed any crashes, however, in VirtualBox yet. Um, but I will say that it does seem to react a little bit differently in a bare metal install than it does here in a virtual machine. Let me go ahead and log in. Okay, and it should come up the full screen. Um, 1920 by 1080 monitor is what I have uh, hanging on this. And um, should come up to that, hopefully. As I said, it takes a few seconds for it to come up. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get the full screen, which I really love. I don't like installing or having to install VirtualBox Guest Editions. I don't use VMware, so VirtualBox Guest Editions with what it be, would be installing. I don't like to do that if I don't have to. It's an extra step. All right, here we are. This is, I have to tell you guys, this is a beautiful um, layout that they have. This is not the default that you get, and I'll show you what you do get. 
but uh, I have, like I said, tweaked it a bit and changed some things around. I've got my panel at the bottom, which I, I like, and I've got it set up, I believe, in a Redmond style uh, theming. It's a global theme called Redmond, and we'll look at that here in a moment. But let's look at see what we have here. Um, we've got the application menu, and if we click on it, uh, it comes up here to this is the standard menu that we have. Uh, and I'll go through this menu here in a moment. Uh, but we do have some things on the favorites, and this is our favorites list here as well. Notice Vivaldi web browser. I have my Vivaldi back. Uh, I really prefer Vivaldi even over Firefox if I can get it um, and set it up properly and that it works the way it should. Um, there are some things about Vivaldi that I like. Very clean and crisp, and um, it even has syncing just like Firefox does. Not a big Chromium uh, web browser fan or Chrome web browser fan. Uh, I have been using the Edge browser for Chrome in Windows 10 uh, on my uh, main PC. All right, so here we've got the file manager, and if I click on that, uh, I've got it set up with the theme that I have here. Notice it's transparent, which I really like. But this is really nice. This is really neat. I, I like it. Um, and then we'll, we'll get into that, but I just want to show you there. Um, here, this is the store, and I'll click on the store while we're here and show you what the store looks like. Now, uh, Farron OS is, is this is the 2019 build, December 2019 build. It is based on Ubuntu and Debian uh, in Cinnamon, Mint, okay? Um, but uh, the 2019 build for December has KDE in it, and uh, I really like that. This is the KDE that you're looking at right here. So you've got the Plasma KDE 5 Plasma, and uh, that's really nice looking, crisp, very responsive. So here we go. Here's the editor's picks. Here's the categories that you can uh, choose from. Accessories, internet, sound and video, customization, office. It does have the uh, full LibreOffice uh, suite, which I'm not very partial to. I'm not very keen on LibreOffice. I do have a subscription to uh, SoftMaker, uh, and I have it on my laptop, and I have it uh, uh, in Windows 10 as well. System tools, games, programming, editors, photo or editors' picks here, uh, graphics, science and education, and flat pack. Um, here we have the minimized windows. We have Windows list. Uh, so if I click on Windows list, see what I get here. Um, Bring it up. It's not bringing anything up that I can see. Um, Windows list. No, it's not bringing anything up. So we'll take a look at that. Onboard uh, networks. I'm, I am wired connected right now. No battery available. Printers. Keyboard indicator. KDE Connect. I use KDE Connect to connect to my personal cloud. I've got a five terabyte personal cloud, and I'll show you that in File Manager when we get to it. Uh, no devices detected there on the. Uh, Bluetooth, and I don't have that set up here. 75% volume notifications, and then we have the calendar, which is really kind of cool. Uh, the second of uh, January 2020, hard to believe we're already in the 2020, January 2020 already. So it is the second, and uh, so this is kind of a cool calendar. All right, so we can set up time as well. I've got 11 a.m., I've got regular time, not uh, military time. And then I've got uh, the terminal. I've got console set up already with the solarized dark theme, 14 uh, point font. And uh, so let's do a uname, back R, and you can see that we're running a 5.0.0-37- generic kernel. Uh, so that is the latest kernel that we're running here. If I do a uname, back A, we can see that uh, it is Linux. Farron OS VM with this kernel, uh, and it is based on Ubuntu, as I told you. Uh, x86 64 uh, GNU Linux distro. If I do a DFKH uh, here, you can see that the way it's set up, I'm using 39% here of dev SDA1. Uh, I set it up with a 50 gig uh, virtual disk image, um, dynamically expanding and dynamically allocated. So I'm using 39% of it now. 
but I didn't do anything fancy here with setting up partitioning or anything because this is a VM. All right, and so I think I have HTOP installed. And so, yeah, uh, so with HTOP installed, here's the memory that I'm running right now. It's about, uh, I, I can't read the numbers here, but you can see graphically that we're still okay. We're just fine for memory. Uh, if I get out of this, if I go back to the to the terminal and do a free, uh, you can see that then for memory allocation and usage, we're running about uh, about 600 megabytes out of a total of uh, four gigs. So 600 megs out of four gigs, not bad at all. We're not using any swap. There is buffered uh, and cached memory that uh, is being used and shared right now. So not bad. Uh, I've had this up for a while. All right, so let's go ahead and get out of that. And um, I'll do a right click on the desktop and go down to configure desktop. Let's take a look at the uh, selection of wallpapers that we have here. We have quite a bit uh, of wallpapers we can choose from, I noticed. It's, I really like this. Um, let's go down. We've got the classic, default classic, the default here. For next, let me just go apply some of these. Um, got one called Lucid Gates. That, that's kind of cool. I've uh, got one here of a wall. Let's take a look at that. And yeah, not too sure I'm keen on that one. Uh, too close up. Let's take a look at this one, Lake Frost. Oh, that's kind of nice. Let me get that out of the way here. Yeah, that's nice. Um, keep going. Let's see. I kind of like this one, Perspective. Used to live in Chicago area, so I'm used to a lot of buildings. Um, I like that one too. Murdoch Deep. Let's take a look at that. Kind of cool. Really like it. Moving out of the way. Uh, see how responsive this uh, the thing is, guys. This, this is really nice. Oh, we got one here. Uh, got a dolphin. Let's go ahead and click on that. And uh, yeah, I like that. Okay. Um, all right, um, got wave. Let's take a look at wave. Cool. And um, let's see, we got this one here. That one's kind of nice. Yeah, I like that. All right, so you can see the selection that we have here. This is the one I currently have, and I'll put it back. Um, and then we've got uh, the original Leaves of Life. You like that? Uh, we've got the kitty cat over here, the original wallpaper. Uh, you know, you even have this one here. I'll put that back here in a moment. But uh, yeah, you, I mean, you can go out to this is the origami uh, original here wallpaper. Um, and there's 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 a lot to choose from here, guys. Uh, it's unbelievable. In the bicycle. We got uh, here. We got the city scene. I click on that one. Nice, very nice. All right, let me go back up. And uh, so that wasn't the full extent, although but we did see quite a few of them here. Uh, let me go back to the one I had. There we go. I like that one. All right, and so let me go ahead and uh, click OK, get out of this. Back to the wallpaper that I chose. I like this one. Uh, I'm a former uh, Navy veteran, and so I like anything to do with ocean and water. So. Um, it's just partial to that, and so that's what I've got set up right now. Let's take a look at the menu. If I right-click on this and configure uh, application menu, you can see we have several things that we can... Well, let's take a look at this first. Uh, you can change the icon out here for the Start Menu icon if you want to do that. Uh, under General here, we've got the Show Applications by Name Only. All right, so that's good. Um, Show recent applications and recent documents. Right click on here and edit applications. Um, you can go in here and you can edit your applications as well, Move them, moving what you have here off uh, and adding things on that you want to add. It was a switcher for the menu, and I'm trying to uh, unlock the widgets here. And let me right click and see. Show alternatives. There we go. Yeah, and so you have your application dashboard, you've got the launcher, you've got the application menu, which is what I was on, I believe. It was could have been the simple menu, 
What I wanted to show you, if you're a, a person that's coming over from Windows to Linux and you want to um, see what Linux has to offer, but you don't want to get too far away from Windows, here's a tile menu that looks just like Windows 10. Let me switch to it. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, click on it here. And if I click on it, look at this, guys. I mean, you've got your tiles over here that you can move around. Okay. Um, move that around there and then you've got your other menus here uh, you know you can select that pop it up it looks just like a Windows 10 menu I mean you couldn't ask for any better than this uh, you might want to check that out um, I think that would be a great thing for people who are coming from Windows to Linux uh, so they don't get you know a total shock uh, of what they normally see when they switch from Windows to Linux distros, uh, but that Windows 10 menu there, I mean, that would that would uh, make you homesick for, for Windows, maybe even. I don't know. Uh, I like this. Uh, I like the fact that you can go in here and um, select it just like you do for uh, for Windows. It's really cool. So let's right click here and go back up and uh, show alternatives again. Let's go back out to uh, the simple menu, I think that's what I was on. Let me switch to it and see what we have. Uh, nope, that's a simple menu. So this is the simple menu. Uh, and so I'm sure that you guys are familiar with this menu as well. Let's go back out, right click, and let's uh, show alternatives again. And let's take a look at the, this is the one I was on, the application menu. The application launcher. Um, Dashboard is another one that uh, I'm sure that most folks are used to seeing. And that's where it just comes up to this kind of thing. A lot of people like this, uh, being able to just, you know, scroll down here on the right, have everything come up in the middle, uh, have your favorites be out here on the left. I mean, you know, there's a lot of um, acceptance of this kind of menu. Pre my preference here. Uh, it's what I had coming up, which is the application menu. So I'm going to switch back to it. I just like that better. But I, I may switch to the Windows 10 menu, to be honest, because I do use Windows 10. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. And one of the things I like about uh, this build of Farron, and like I said, I've used Farron before, but it's been a while. Uh, but the 2019 December build, I lo what I like about it is, you know, you don't have 20 different versions of uh, you know, Office. Uh, you don't have you know six browsers. Uh, you don't have uh, four applications for looking at your your pictures uh, from editing your pictures. You just have the basic stuff, and then you can go into the store and choose what you want and uninstall what you, what's there by default and, and and that kind of thing. I like that. Uh, they leave a lot of that choice up to you. So here's the recent applications. You can see I've got several things that I've been looking at recently. Here's my recent documents. Uh, under education, you got mathematics, which is the LibreOffice math. You've got science. Under graphics, you've got Krita out of the box, LibreOffice Draw out of the box, Ocular, Photos, and Simple Scan all natively out of the box here. Uh, under internet, you've got Gary. Uh, I installed GFTP, which is my GNOME file transfer protocol client. I click on that. I'll log into my five terabyte personal cloud. Okay, so you can see that uh, I'm looking at my personal cloud now. And you see how fast that was, that it connected to my personal cloud out on my network. And so this is cool. All right. So let's get back in. And for internet, we have KDE Connect. I can do a KDE Connect and connect directly. Uh, to my personal cloud with a folder out on the desktop. I won't do that, but you can do it. Um, okay, uh, Ramina, you got the Vivaldi web browser. If you're not familiar with Vivaldi, check it out, guys, because uh, unlike Firefox, even and Chrome, especially, Vivaldi just has uh, some, some attributes that I really like. This is what it looks like. This is the uh, speed dial. You've got bookmarks and you've got history uh, here as well. Okay, and so 
I've got my uh, YouTube here, Amazon. Uh, you can remove these, okay? Uh, if you don't want these, you know, for instance, if I don't want to get started and I just want to click on that, I can get rid of that. I can add another one here. So let me add my personal website. If I can type uh, in linuxveritas.com and it should come up here momentarily. And um, I click on that and it brings up my personal website. I've got a personal website here on, uh, on Linux. The Zetabyte file system explained, and uh, let me go ahead and close that. And so this is my uh, personal blog here um, that I have set up. And let me see, let me go back out here, and if I get to, uh, let's see, setting up quotas. Yeah, so this is my personal blog. And so you can do that in Vivaldi. Vivaldi's got a bunch of stuff over here. This video is not about Vivaldi, but uh, check out Vivaldi. I think you'll like it. All right. So let's get back in and uh, get up to internet, and I think we're done there. Well, well, we've got the web browser manager. Now, this is what I wanted to mention to you. With the web browser manager, this is kind of cool. Uh, I haven't seen this before in any other distro that I've ever looked at, and I've been working with Linux now since uh, 1994 or 95 time frame. Web browser manager. You can install Mozilla Firefox, Chrome, Chrome Web, Vivaldi, Chromium, Opera, Brave and Falcon. You can uninstall the one that's already installed and install this one if you want to replace Vivaldi with, say, Opera. And you can do it right from the web browser manager. You can install a secondary or a tertiary web browser if you want to do that as well. So this is uh, this is kind of cool. I like this. All right, so let's get back up in Office the Multimedia. Okay, for Multimedia, you got Cheese. I install G Radio. I like listening to Internet Radio. VLC Media Player, that comes out of the box, and it's the only player that's out of the box. Uh, if you want another one, you can install it. But I like the fact that they chose VLC Media Player as the default player, because that's probably my choice as well. I install VocoScreen for running uh, uh, screen capture recordings. Uh, I am using OBS right now to record this video. I'm not using VocoScreen, but VocoScreen is a great screen capture video recording software package for Linux. If you haven't used it, give it a, give it a look and use that as well. So it's a great little uh, application. For Office, you have Calendar. Uh, you've got uh, your LibreOffice suite. So I said I'm not very partial or keen on LibreOffice. There are things about it I like. There are things about it I don't like. I won't get into the particulars of it, but I'm just not a big fan of LibreOffice. Uh, you might be, and that's great if you are. Um, I like SoftMaker. SoftMaker looks just like Microsoft Office 2016, and uh, it does everything that I want it to do. Uh, I'm a big uh, user of Microsoft Office Suite in Windows 10 when I did have it. Now I don't have it anymore. Um, just don't use it, but uh, Fully compatible. LibreOffice is also fully compatible with Microsoft Office. So you can save into .docx format. The thing about LibreOffice, though, is by default it wants to save into the ODF um, format, which is the open document format. Uh, you can switch over and say, I want it saved as a .docx or .doc or whatever, and that's fine. I believe you can change the behavior so by default it does save in a Microsoft Office format rather than uh, open source format. But the thing I like about SoftMaker, if you get the key for it, if you buy the license for it, which is an annual subscription, it automatically switches over to Microsoft Office by default. Okay, you've got Oc Ocular here for PDF viewing. Under Settings, you've got uh, your Farron Maintenance Tool. You've got Disks, the Firewall. You've got the Vontum Manager, Languages, Login Window, Software Sources. The store, let me pull up the store again. We can take a look at that. And in the store, um, when it does come up, it's a little slower, as I said, in the uh, virtual machine. It's not this slow in bare metal. So, And it does caution you when you install this in virtual machine that it's going to be not the same experience that you get in bare metal. All right, so you've got Stellarium, Skype, Dropbox, Shutter, Steam. I mean, you know, if I go into Office here, 
I click on Office, I can select LeafPad, for instance, and I will put LeafPad on. That's uh, synonymous to Notepad uh, in Windows. All right, and uh, let's, let's just go ahead and install LeafPad. So I'm going to click on it. Get the install button pops up here, so let's click on install button, and uh, so it's going ahead and installing. I need to put in my password. Let it authorize the installation, and so it's going ahead and installing LeafPad. And uh, if you haven't used LeafPad, check it out. Uh, I think you'll like LeafPad. All right, let me go ahead and launch it. And there's LeafPad. So let me go ahead and close the store here, and bring that up, and uh, I'll go ahead size this out. Um, but here's LeafPad. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and save this. Save as. Let's go ahead and save it in the document directory and uh, let's click save. And let's save it as uh, now is the time dot text. Click save. And there we go. Uh, if I get into my file manager bring that up and let me bring that over and click on documents there it is now's the time text and it opens in leafpad no actually it opened in kate so I'd, I'd have to change the default behavior here of the file extension right now file extensions are set for txt opening in kate that's fine i like kate as well okay so let's get back into Farron here for settings uh we are the synaptic package manager let me get into that and the Synaptic Package Manager is if you haven't used Synaptic, it's great because there isn't anything that, pretty much that you can't find here uh, that you can search on. Uh, you know, like GFTP. I'll click search and it should already be installed. It is. Uh, this is a great way to install. If you don't want to go through the GUI and do it, you can do it through Synaptic. And uh, it, the nice thing about it is, is uh, well, this does this in in the Windows or the terminal rather as well but in Synaptic it shows you right up front what the uh, dependencies are that go along with GFTP so along with GFTP you've got the GFTP common GTK text etc etc I'm going to close that all right and so under settings I believe we're still there yeah get back into it system settings let's get into system settings take a look at what we have here We've got a whole plethora of things here, guys. Uh, the theming, you can click on theme here. And I'm running the Redmond layout right now. But you can choose Breeze, Breeze Dark, the Cupertino layout that has the Docker uh, here. Um, I think that's the Latte Docker or Latte Dock. Uh, I'm not going to switch to any of these because it will change my entire theme profile. I don't want to do that because I've got to spend a lot of time setting this up. Familiar layout, Farron OS, Farron OS Dark, if you're a dark theme person, which I am, um, you can uh, set that up as well. You notice I've got dark down here. Farron OS Lite, Redmond layout, so I chose the Redmond layout, which is more of the Windows style, uh, and then I ap applied the dark uh, aspects to it. Tablet mode, if you're a tablet user, and then Ubuntu Unity layout, I'm not a big Ubuntu Unity fan, so won't be switching to that. All right, so here's your global themes. Under the Plasma style, this is where you can get into the Farron OS alternate here, which is what I chose, which is a dark theme. You've got the Farron OS dark, breeze dark, and breeze air, breeze light, Farron OS light, you know, oxygen, et cetera, et cetera. You could even get more, or you can install from a file if you did it from the web. Windows decorations here, you can uh, select that. It's closed unexpectedly, so let me restart the application. This happens when you run this on virtual machine, so I did warn you at the beginning on the install. When you do install this, it tells you you may have crashing applications in the virtual machine. That's okay. I've never had a crash in my bare metal install. We've got desktop effects here uh, that you can. This is why you don't need to install Compiz because you've got all these things you can do here within this application desktop effects uh, rather look you know like eye on screen dim screen for administrator mode etc cetera, etc cetera. you've got a choice here for your fonts you've got a whole plethora of, of changes you can make 
for Windows management here. You can change the behavior here of the Windows itself, the task switching. You can change all of that as well. So screen locking here, you can tell it to automatically after five minutes lock the screen. After waking, you know, you can change this. You can bump this up. I don't like it to lock after five minutes, uh, 20 minutes. Uh, after waking from sleep, it's going to go into the lock screen mode. Uh, allow unlocking without the password for five seconds. After that, you need a password to get in. You've got a full setup here for, uh, let me go ahead and discard any changes here. For accessibility, uh, here you've got things you can do for, you know, if you're sight impaired or hearing impaired, you can make those changes from within here. Account details, you can set up your account details here. I've got myself as the only user. For applications, you can do your default applications or your file associations. Remember for text, uh, Kate, I believe, was what was set up for .txt. And if I come down here, I should be able to find .txt. I'm not going to spend all day if I can't find it. Um, but uh, .t, don't see it. That's okay. I'm not going to spend all day on it. But you can go in here and change. You can even add. Uh, let me just do that. .txt. Okay, so here for text. All right, well, I was in it. Um, and so you can change your file associations there uh, as well. Out of this, regional settings, workplace, a workspace behavior, uh, display informational tooltips, display virtual visual feedback for status changes, etc. Screen actions, shortcuts, virtual desktops. You can change those. I've got four desktops set up. Uh, KDE Connect and notifications, input devices, display and monitor. Uh, you can see I'm running at 1920 by 1080 here. Orientation is normal. 60 uh, hertz on the refresh rate. For the global scale, I'm doing a 1.0x. Bluetooth, if I want to set that up as well. So let me get out of the settings now. Get back here and for um, settings, I believe we ended up with system settings. And so we have the theme colorizer and the Wacom tablet finder. For system, you've got the driver manager. Now on my laptop, I have a, a Dell uh, Broadcom B43 network interface card. Very uh, temperamental uh, with a lot of Linux distros. Um, and so when I got uh, my bare metal install of Farron OS December 2019 build set up, I went into the driver manager first thing because I did not have wireless connectivity because the wireless was not functioning on the laptop. Went into driver manager and lo and behold when I clicked on it, put in my password. This is not on the laptop right now, but um, it updated the cache, which is what it's doing right here. And sure enough, guys, it, it found my wireless network card, saw that it was a Broadcom B43, and offered a driver. Uh, for me to set it up when I clicked on it, install the driver, boom. Um, there was my wireless, and I was able to connect to my wireless network right away. So I really like that uh, here in this distro. Here's HTOP, here's the Info Center. If I click on Info Center, it tells me a little bit about uh, the uh, distro itself, how much memory is being used here. Uh, energy, energy information on the uh, on the distro file index monitor device information um, it didn't switch to it here network information it's not switching to it for some reason let's get out of it and get back into it or remember we're in a virtual machine um, all right info center if I bring it over again and go to network information, it should select network information. Oh, I've got to go down. That's what it is. Uh, network interfaces. My bad. Samba status, device information, uh, let's say I.O. ports, USB devices. Look at this, guys. This is, this is unbelievable. Interrupts. So you can take a look at your system interrupts, your PCI. Okay, and for device viewer, for your storage devices, optical and hard disk drive, 
this is the virtual machine, your processes and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, graphical information here for X server, Wayland, and OpenGL. Wonderful little interface there, uh, utility. System, um, okay, SysGuard is here. Uh, login window, send feedback or report an issue. Software sources, store, I told, showed you that. Time shift. Now, if you're not a time shift user, uh, I use time shift on my, my laptop. I have run, as you can see here, a snapshot of my system. Uh, it's just one daily snapshot you can set up. You can schedule a snapshot to occur on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, etc., etc. And you can do that through the settings here. It says an R sync or BTRFS, you can click schedule and you can set it up for monthly, weekly, hourly, or a combination, if you will. All right, and uh, booting as well. And I really like it because um, I can um, run a snapshot of my system and it's kind of like a rollback, um, you know, uh, your uh, rollback for restore point in Windows if you're familiar with Windows. Uh, for creating restore points. And what this does is it doesn't take a look at your, you can tell it to do it, but by default it does not look at your home directory. And, uh, and so it doesn't back up your home directory, it just backs up the system stuff. And so here I'm backing up the system, taking a snapshot of the system in time once a day for five days a week. And then I can tell it how many of those snapshots to retain. And so if I run into a problem here, uh, especially on bare metal, I can actually get in here. If I can get into the operating system, I can get in and I can tell it to roll back. So if I had something I installed that it caused the system to become unstable, I can go in here and tell it to roll back to a previous restore point and uh, it'll do that for you. So check it out. It's called Time Shift. I love it. All right, so let's look at what else we have under System. Uh, we have Transfer Tool. This is a cool thing. The transfer tool, if you're, especially if you're coming from Windows environment to Linux environment for the first time, or from one Linux distro to another, let's say if I was running uh, another distro, like say uh, CentOS or whatever, uh, I can click on the backup data, let it choose the, uh, the data that I was running in the previous distro, or from Windows, or even the uh, browser settings, okay? and then restore data and it will actually transfer all those settings over to your new Baron OS. That's the transfer tool. Check that out. All right. Update manager. So if you don't want to get into the terminal to do your updates, you can do it from within your update manager here for security updates, software updates and system snapshots. All right. I'm not going to I wasn't going to do a, an update. I don't think there are any but I click the button anyway, so let me see if there are any. If there are, I'll go ahead and just cancel it. I want to take the time to do that here in this video. Um, systems up to date, so we don't have any to, to actually show you. But you can install your updates there, and you can do either security or regular updates. All right, for utilities, we have ARC, Calculator, Disks, Files, Kate. Cleopatra I installed because I wanted to install uh, encryption here on the system. Latte, uh, Leafpad, Maps, and Spectacle. Spectacle is nice because I can do snapshots of the, of the system. I've got the five second, let me bring that down to a three second delay. I can do a full screen snapshot. So let me do, I'm not going to include the, the mouse pointer. Let's take a new screenshot of the desktop and show you that that does a snapshot there and then you can do a save as and I already have a Farron OS desktop so I'll select it to save and then overwrite the previous one that I had alright and so now we have uh, I'm going to open the containing folder and there it is I can uh, double click on it and bring up the actual snapshot that I just took of the system very nice very nice guys Okay, so I believe we've looked at pretty much everything. Uh, here's does have a help menu. Uh, we can lock the system. We can log out, switch the user, sleep, restart, or shut down the system. Okay. 
Here we can control the switch user or the logout. This is the favorites menu here on the left hand side and uh, we can use that as well. Everything is on the left hand side here and that was by, um, by default uh, for this particular setup which is the Redmond layout here. All right, so this has been a quick look at Farron OS 2019, December 2019 build. Um, guys, get in here and take a look at this. I think you will like it. Um, you can move the panel, by the way, if I, if I want to uh, and do a flexible size of the panel. If I edit the panel here, I can move the panel around, and I can uh, take and move it to the top if I want, or bring it back down to the bottom. I can change its height. I can lock the widgets. Let me just go ahead and lock it. Um, but you've got a lot of flexibility. You can even move it to the right or left, left or right, if you want to do that as well. So this has been a, uh, a look at uh, Farron OS uh, December 2019 build. Highly recommend it. For me, this is a keeper. This is going to be my daily driver on the laptop for the foreseeable future. And so check it out. I, I encourage you to do that. Um, if you're not a, a member of or subscriber to my channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button, subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, if you thought it was helpful, uh, go ahead and subscribe or go ahead and click on the thumbs up for the video itself, and that helps me in my channel. And so this has been Data Pioneer, and you have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye bye.